No, this right here, this will happen to y'all beautiful ladies. If y'all don't understand the position y'all in, you know, like, I understand you think you can do everything, but look, at the end of the day, anything can go crash down quick as hell, you know. She's 31, homeless. Let's see what your future lies. And so if he saw this video, do you think that he would want to come and get you up off the street? Probably so. Have you ever considered maybe calling him? No. Why not? It's because, uh, you know what? I, I know it's hard to talk about it, but I'm gonna just say it anyway. What's up YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews out here with another one. Um, so we got a young lady out here today. How you doing today, miss? I'm doing good. All right, all right. So how old are you? I'm 31. 31, are you homeless? As of right now, yes. Now, what I'm gonna say is like, everyone goes through different stages of life, so you know, you can't really judge a book by its cover at the end of the day, you know, a certain, like a certain position you win doesn't mean that's your highest potential. So she can flourish higher than anybody's potential that we even know. But it's just a simple fact that just reading the title, you can see like how crazy it's like God sent her multiple blessings and she just found a way to screw everything up. I feel like God can only help you so much because he can't really help you. You got to help yourself. You know, in the Bible, you should respect yourself. Your body is the temple of the Lord. You should treat yourself as such. But don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't miss the signs he's showing you. Don't do that. Okay. And so what would you say has brought you to this point of being homeless in your life? Um, during the pandemic, people getting laid off and everything. So it's like, what? It's cap. Because there's multiple people that I know that quote unquote got laid off. And when they do, they was getting paid from it. You know, they was getting paid if they got laid off. And if they didn't get paid, bro, I'm telling you, they, they're gonna find a way to make ends meet. They're gonna find a way, they, have, they probably had a savings, you know, they find a way to make that paper come in. Cause pe at the end of the day, people are not trying to be homeless, you know? But before the pandemic, I was living good, making sure, you know, just making sure that my house was good and everything, but- Now if you're living good, the, the pandemic happening and you, um, and you uh, losing your job doesn't necessarily mean you should be homeless. If you're living good, unless you're living good is different from my living good. My living good is I at least have one to two years of money saved up for expenses, whether that be rent, car note, insurance, everything. So if all my bills for one year comes out to a total of ten thousand, I would like to have around. $20,000 worth of uh, that expense. God forbid something happens like that situation she's in. Boom. I'm homeless or I'm out of a job. I have enough money to pay since I'm not going to be commuting to work. That's more money in my pockets so I don't have to pay for gas. But uh, say if I have a car note, so that the money's going to go to the car note. I have money for um my rent. You know, I have money for uh electricity or whatever you pay like this you do you, that's just how i this how i think so i will usually have expenses for like a year or two i mean some people say six to a year but i feel like a year or two is plenty of enough time for you to get yourself back up during the pandemic it, it's just it just threw everybody off because everybody's losing their job and then they said that they have rent forgiveness but they don't they don't have rent forgiveness. They do, but in certain locations. Do your research. You know, you, you don't read everything you see on social media. Do your research. Some landlords some, uh, will, will comply with this, some won't. Do your research. Okay. And now you see all my brothers and sisters. I call it my brothers and sisters. All the village people out here. Okay. You hold, know. hold on real quick. All right. Technical. You say you're 31. Mm -hmm. um, so, again. You basically said that the kind of the pandemic got you into a situation where you you basically couldn't pay your rent and you uh, got kicked out. When? How long have you been uh, without a roof over you? It's been a whole month. Okay, so it's been a month. So, all right. So let's let's start from the beginning. So, okay, it's been a whole month, and right now, currently, this interview has been done. Let's let's let me not get it incorrect. 
February 22nd. So that's this is very recently. There should not be any reason why she's currently homeless. If it happened in the prime peak of a COVID, I understand. But this is like at the decline. So I don't I don't know what she's talking about. Where are you from? I'm originally from Rhode Island. Okay, from Rhode Island. Shout out Rhode Island. Um, and so uh, growing up, did you have both your mother and your father in the household? Uh, I would say my dad was the backbone of the household, old school type of way, the backbone, the, really like a backbone, basically make sure the household was good. But me and my siblings, we have different combinations of- I can tell you kind of slow, cause he asked you a yes, no question and you going on a, on a tangent that doesn't correlate with this subject whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? What are you talking about? Of mothers and fathers. So me and my sister has the same dad and me and my brother has the same mom, but I'm the oldest out of all of them. I get it. Yeah, but growing up, they made sure in a collective type of ways, they made sure that we was good. We had, we had good knowledge, make sure that we read books and everything. Okay, and so growing up, you would say that you had a fairly normal childhood? It was weird, but fair, fairly normal. What was weird about it? Weird about it is when all the parents came together. When anybody got in trouble at school, it's not just one parent showing up; it's all of them showing up. Like, 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 who did it this time? Who did it? Who, who, who did it? Who did it? Well, I mean, that sounds that sounds pretty pretty cool, actually, man. It sounds like a village mentality. It was a village mentality. Okay, and so. Uh, you went to high school. Did you graduate high school? I graduated high school. I went to Morris Brown and I went to Westwood. Okay. Did you graduate Morris Brown? No, because of the accreditation. Back in 2008 and 2009, they lost the accreditation and it was only maybe 50 kids left there. And so did and you graduate from Westwood? Damn. No, because they lost their accreditation. We, we got transferred to Morris Brown. All the kids that was going to Morris, Morris Brown got transferred to Westwood. Then not even six months later, they lost their accreditation too. Okay, so now that's tough, you know. Like then again, like you usually do research on the school you're going to. You don't want to just go to any school. Some people want to go to a credible school. Like me, I, I went to. I'm trying. I don't know how long that school she was talking about went in business, but I usually want to go to one that's been that's been here for decades. You know, just decades, not something that's been here for one decade, a couple of years. Like you want to be something that's been here solidified and you know it's guaranteed but you know i don't know what to tell you i don't know whether they were struggling and that was the only school she could go to but it is what it is i'm gonna put a pin in that right there um so do you have any kids no okay have you ever been married no not not officially on paper why, why the hesitation it's because i was supposed to marry somebody named timon and he got shot on his birthday. Damn. Sorry to hear about that. Yeah. How long had y'all been dating? We, we grew up together. He was my best friend. How long ago did that happen? About five years ago. Damn. Okay. Like I say, my condolences for that. Um, and so, what were you doing, you know, kind of in between the ages of 22 and you know a month ago between 22 and a month ago okay let's go down the timeline i was working at the radio station on night shift what radio station hot 107.9 on night shift you I was working at hot 107.9 here in atlanta yes okay what were you doing there i was a promoter you know back in the day you know we would hand out cds and hand out you know t-shirts and stuff like that was you an intern or was you a I was more like- Did you like, work there as an employee? I worked there as an intern. Okay. And then a year later, then I, I started to get paid. <clears throat> Damn. But I, I missed that job. Um, I used to work for DJ Chameleon and DJ Scream. I was I was working for Hood Rich Entertainment. So we get to this point. Mm -hmm. um, you, you were working at the radio station. Um, what was the job that you- Sorry, y'all, if I ain't talking that much. I'm just really trying to get real in depth with y'all. We both reacting at the same time so we can really educate ourselves on situations like this so we do not turn out like this. She's a prime example of what you stray away from becoming. 
you know, this is a lot of people fears, and I, I don't blame you, I don't, I don't wish this on anybody, you know, lost a career, just lost a career, lost a loved one, lost their house, like, you've seen that somebody in this position, you'd be like, wow, he has no purpose in life, or she has no purpose in life, you know, has no kids, like, it's real iffy right now, but yeah, that's why I'm not talking, I just want to fully, like, engage on this, this whole dynamic you had right before the pandemic hit. I used to be a construction worker I got I got my uh, my credentials right here. you know you don't have to show your credentials but you you was working construction and I, so and so it the pandemic hit and that caused you to stop working they sent everybody home because okay. uh and so was you getting unemployment for a little while and all like that I got unemployment for maybe two months and then uh the credentials got cut off by the company. I was okay. working. I was working for Baston and Cook. Okay. And so, what have you been doing for income since then? Um, I, you know, just small jobs, working at McDonald's, you know, here and there. I was trying to pay rent, and then the McDonald's I was working at, they actually shut down because. Okay, so it seems like to me, the problem is the area that she currently resides in you know that's the that's my only thought of why she's in this position because she must be in an area where the economic like the eco the whole economic value of the whole uh section she's in has to be losing money you know there's no way in hell you're gonna be shutting down a mcdonald's you know what i'm saying in a thriving economic location bro it's it's real unlikely because that's paper coming in consistently. You know what I'm saying? Construction workers letting you walk. That means there's no job for them to do. And you know construction workers. They work through pandemic regardless. Them boys, they nigga, they, they eat their lunch with dirt on their hands. So for them to fire you, it's, it's, it has to be the location that she's working in for all of this to happen, you know? And she had, I can't, she had plenty of time to, to, um, to find something but my, my my question is why haven't she further her education and her skill set it seems like she's literally at the skill set of an 18 year old that just graduated high school you can't do nothing but minimum wage jobs and that's that's tough because um because it was a grease fire it was on the news this happened like back in december it was on the news to where the mcdonald's because of the grease fire, somebody left the grease on I get when, it. when we closed so, down, and by that morning, it was already burnt up. Okay. Has there any been? Has there ever been any history of drug abuse? No. Okay. What about mental health? Yes. What mental health? Uh, I have didn't. You done? I didn't get my mental health situation when everything started happening last year. When my grandfather died, my grandma died, my uncle died. I start going to counseling. It's actually right down the street to Grady. Uh, it's ten, 10 park place. It's right down the street. Yeah, I'm familiar. And the reason why I went is because I, I became depressed a couple of months ago, which was last year. Were you diagnosed with anything? I was diagnosed with depression. Were you put on any medications for it? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes, I was. Because... Um, it came to a point where I couldn't sleep for two days in a row and then crash on the third day and kept doing the same thing. I'm like, you know what? I need to go get some help. So I want to go get some help. Okay. Um, and so are you in a relationship right now? No. Okay. When was the last time you yeah, was in a relationship? She said that shit with the quickness. She's like, hell no. Nah, fuck no. Hell no. Nah, I'm straight. Fuck no boy. Last time I was in a relationship was last year. What happened to that relationship? Uh, we split apart. We didn't see eye to eye. What specifically did you guys not see eye to eye on? It's, it's that I've been with this person for over three years. And when my mental start declining, that's when he couldn't help me anymore. He couldn't help, help you me. what, financially or help you just in, in what way? Mentally. Okay. He, help. he shouldn't help you mentally. He's not a counselor. You know what I'm saying? He's not a doctor. He's not a psychiatrist. He's not a, a freaking whatever you want to call it. 
That's not his job to help you mentally. He's not his job is not to help you feel happy, help you feel sad, help you feel depressed. You know that it's just not his job. He could he could help you try, but that just it, he, bro. You don't even want his expertise. He's not experienced nor is he a pro. You know it doesn't make this <laughs> doesn't make any sense what you're talking about. Help me mentally anymore, and I left to go to New York. Why'd you leave to go to New York? Uh, to see my uh, mother's side of the family. Okay, so you went to go see family, and what happened? Then it was more funerals I had to go to when I was up there. Right. And so, but how did that contribute to the destruction of the relationship? It's just that we wasn't seeing eye to eye no more. He wants something else, and I what want something want? else. What did he want? He wanted to get married. And I told him no. And <laughs> what? You cannot make this shit up, bro. He wanted to com basically. He wanted to commit, and she said, "Hell no, boy. No, we, we stop right there. I'm, I'm straight. I'm cool out that bit. I was 13 when I hit my first lick. Why didn't you want to get married? <sighs> Scared. It's because of the age difference. How old was he? In his 50s. Was he financially stable? Yeah. It's just that certain, like, I could call him right now and we could have a good conversation. Just he wanted something else and I wanted something else and I wish him for peace. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. If on the off chance that he were to see this video, do you think that he would want you to have been homeless for the last month? Does he know that you're homeless? No, I haven't talked to him. I haven't talked to him ever since December. And so if he saw this video, do you think that he would want to come and get you up off the street? Probably so. Have you ever considered maybe calling him? No. Why not? Too much pride? It's because... Uh, you know what? I, I know it's hard to talk about it, but I'm going to just say it anyway. It's because that... I didn't tell him that I lost my job. I didn't tell him that the little apartment that I had, I lost it. What? I just don't want him to see me as a failure. So it's more of a pride thing than anything. You I'm don't want him to see you as a failure, but you have no shoulder to cry on currently. You know, like, so if you down bad, you down bad regardless. You know, sometimes you just need that person to talk to, that person to to leave, to give you a place to sleep sometimes. Like, it, it don't mean you a failure. You know what I'm saying? To me, you failing at something, it's just a learning lesson for something great. You don't be, you, God don't, God does not put you in a situation that you can't learn nor grow from. You know, every situation you win, you get better. Failure is not failure until you give up. You gotta, you gotta keep that in your mind, bro. I'm just so, being, I'm just so being very, so very honest. Straight up pride. Yeah. Was was the relationship good besides? Yes. You know, okay. He would every Friday hey, I used to do something so cute. Every hey, Friday me, I would uh do date night and I would surprise him when he gets off work and I have candles everywhere, you know, a glass of wine for him and me, and then I'll make his favorite plate, which is ribs. Barbecue ribs. I got you. So let me ask you this. I, I Why are you doing all this, bro? You reminiscing. You like the guy. Come on, bro. Damn. So you got like a little thing here on your eye. Mm -hmm. um, did you get into a fight recently or did something happen? Actually, yeah, I did. Who was it? Who did you get into a fight with? It was... I'm walking out of Chevron. She capping. And it's a barbecue down the street going on at my family spot. And all they did was, hey, you know, go grab us some more beer. You know, they gave me the money. Go grab us some more beer and get some cigarettes. I said, all right, cool. And then all because I didn't want to give the crackhead a dollar, he hit me in my face. When did that happen? That happened uh, back in October. Oh, you still got the mark from it? Actually, whatever ring that he had on. Oh, he had a ring on. Yeah. So it left a pretty decent mark. Yeah. Jesus. All right. Well, listen, um, what are you doing right now to 
Are you or are you doing anything to actively kind of get yourself off the street right now? Hell no. Actually, right now I've been trying to look for a job without an ID, which is hard. Well, which is really hard. What okay. happened to your ID? Listen, if anyone wanted to reach out or help out or donate, do you have a cash app or anything like that? People could help you out. Uh, I got my cash app card in my wallet. What's your cash app? Shout it out. It's my Sherrod ninety. Dollar sign in front? Yes. And, and spell that out? M Y S H E R R O D 90. All right, all right. Well, Miss, we uh, definitely want nothing but the best for you. Um, and we wish you the best out here, all right? This is only temporary, you guys. Only temporary. Definitely. How, bro, this, how the fuck is this nigga homeless with some goddamn cool grays on, bro? What the fuck? But look, y'all. She's 31, down bad. You see, the thing is with females and dudes, it's real hard for a female to really bounce back like a dude is. Because a lot of times out of 10, she don't have the grit, the fortitude, the willingness, the knowledge, the strength to come out of a, a, a position that she's in like this. You know, usually you will see like dudes do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got nothing against her. I'm not saying she can't. I'm hoping the best, praying the best for her. But it's, you got to take into account, after 31 years, this is what, it, it's crazy. And it's, it's not 31 years that she's, it's not, I'm not saying it like it's a bad thing. It's 31 years where she finished high school, went to college, had a couple of jobs, had a, had a marriage proposal. But now she's a delinquent. She wasn't. It sounded like she was pretty knowledgeable. So it, I can't. It's real hard to judge because situations like this is real iffy. This could happen to anybody, and it, it, it just depends on the certain person and like what you believe in and how hard you grind. Because I, I wholeheartedly believe if she really wanted to, if she really didn't want to be homeless, she didn't have to. You know, I believe that as soon as she got fired from